Etienne Debe, uh, lane four, lane five, sorry, the athlete from Saskatchewan, Connor Dodds, and lane six, the athlete from British Columbia, Nicholas Schramm. So Max, you obviously have a lot of experience uh, racing the lightweight single. Now, lightweights, of course, have to uh, weigh in before this event. So can you walk us through a little bit about what uh, sort of things you have to deal with as well as racing and managing that? Yes, so all these athletes will be weighing in at uh, 72.5 kilograms. That's the late rate that we have for the National Rowing Championships. And so uh, you, gotta make sure you, are, you have to weigh in on, on a scale um, two hours before your event, and uh, after which you would do your bit to get ready for your race. And so it's uh, what it ends up happening oftentimes is we have these very close races because the athletes are so evenly matched both physically uh, – Okay, sorry. We had a bit of a story, but there they are. The athletes are lined up, ready to go. Um, bow lines, bow, bow ball is getting lined up. Now, what about the start here in the lightweight single? What are we, what are we hoping to look for in this, Taylor? Well, I remember watching you race the lightweight single, Max, and I'd always watch you explode out of the gates and try and get any little bit of an advantage you can. But what I love about the lightweight events, especially the single, is every athlete weighs the exact same. So, in my opinion, it comes down to technique, tactics, and toughness. So right away you see lane three, and that's Stephen Harris, the athlete with a fair bit of experience in the men's, in the lightweight men's single, blasting off the start lines, well over 40 strokes a minute there, trying to get his bow ball in front. When you have that power and that ability to produce the power off the start, doing a, being able to get ahead obviously can be a bit of an advantage as it gives you a chance to then stretch out, add the length, add the power, and really get a get a hold of the race and use that visual component to be able to capitalize on, on the field. Absolutely. And you know what? I think it, it deems, uh, repeating again, just how tough this boat class can be. Lightweights really are in a f class of their own from getting up way earlier than us heavyweights to have to sweat down and weigh in, but also the technicality. Uh, whenever someone asks me to show an example of good rowing, I always direct them towards lightweight rowing because you don't have the raw power that heavyweights can sometimes uh, muscle through. You have to be technical, especially if there's a headwind. Absolutely. Margins are usually very tight in this event uh, as the athletes, having all weighed in at 72.5 kilos, relatively power-wise, uh, are within the same bandwidth. And so it comes down to the technical differences and, and who can make that technical change to then produce a little more efficient boat speed. Well, it looks like it certainly may be lightweight conditions here as we squint down the course. Looks like there's still that helpful tailwind. Uh, we'll probably let the athletes tell us whether or not it's helpful or not. Uh, looking at your screen here, uh, way over to lane one, John uh, Sinksinka, uh, and over to, pardon me, I have them the wrong way. Lane six on the very right-hand side of your screen is Nicholas Schramm. And then next to him, Connor Dodson, who uh, got bronze in the lightweight men's quad at U23s this year. Yes, we had a number of athletes that were competing in that quad together uh, who did win a bronze medal, a, a big battle for them in the in the event. And uh, so, again, that additional layer of uh, breaking rights between teammates as opposed, as in addition to who will be crowned national champion. Absolutely, and you know the under-23 is a very important stepping stone in, in many athletes' careers, especially the ones that have risen up through the system and rode uh, through their high school years. So very important that uh, these athletes here are securing themselves for a spot either on the under-23 team for next year or hoping to move up to the senior level. Well, so opportunity, that's the word of the day today in these A finals uh, as we have three medals to play for the lightweight uh, men's single skull and an important year to be around. Uh, worth mentioning as well that heartbreakingly, the men's um, or men and women's lightweight sculling uh, will no longer be continuing as an Olympic event after Paris 2024. Yes, that'll be something that we have to tune in, having uh, had our girls qualify. So they'll be there competing at the Paris 2024 Games, and we'll be sure to tune in and cheer them on. So zooming in here, we have uh, on the right-hand side of the screen, that's uh, Giancarlo Di Pompeo, um, looking like he's in a, in a, bit, of a, a bit of a tight battle here against the athlete from Ontario, Stephen Harris. Now, these two would know each other correctly, Taylor. That's right. So obviously, uh, these two would have competed at under-23s together. Giancarlo, uh, of course, stroking the under-23 men's lightweight quad this summer to a brilliant bronze medal. Uh, first time we've medaled in that event, I believe. That's and, correct. Yeah, and Stephen Harris, of course, being an under-23 uh, medalist as well in the men's single. So these two will be going after the position of who's top dog. 
We'll quickly give you a recap of that heart-stopping finish there from the women's pair. It was Filmer and Battersbury with the gold, Meshkalite and Simpson with the uh, silver, and Kronk and Edwards with a fantastic sprint to bronze. Yeah, that was great racing. That was fantastic racing. I really love that. You see so much resolve in the athletes when they're competing for their national championships and, of course, you know, having to compete as well for funding and trying to make a spot onto the Olympic team. So they've now set themselves up well for next season. And we did see the lineup change, you know, just because you're off the start first or just because you're ahead at the 1,000 meters doesn't necessarily mean anything. It's a long race and it takes a full 2K. Now tell us, Taylor, a little bit more about this athlete here. You would know him quite well because he is an athlete from the University of Victoria, John Carlo. Well, you know, John Carlo has... He's got a tiger in him, absolutely, and he is absolutely hungry to be successful. And he's 19 years old, so he is, I believe, one of the youngest ones in this event who's competing. And he is, he is uh, obviously in a really good scrap out here with uh, Stephen Harris. And Stephen, of course, taking all that experience that he has racing internationally in the single. And John Carlo is just going to hang on to him there like Andrea mentioned earlier, not breaking the elastic, not allowing him to get away. And one thing that John Carlo can do is sprint, but I also know that Stephen Harris can work very well out in front, so it's all to play for in the last closing sections of the race. This yeah. is great experience for Stephen, as uh, this later in October he will be competing for Team Canada at the Pan Am Games, uh, his first uh, multi-sport games event that he'll be competing at, which is a big stepping stone for his running career. Absolutely, and uh, Max, uh, of course you competed at the uh, 2015 Pan American Games in Toronto and obviously a big stepping stone for your career in the lead up to the Rio Olympics. So obviously, you know, any, any amount of international starts that you can get, the better. Beautiful overhead shot here to give us another picture of the distance that is being made before, between the leading two boats and the rest. Looks to me, and of course we don't want to read too much into body language because this is not a dressage event, but it did look like Stephen Harris was um, dropping his head a little bit at the finish. It definitely uh, went out and make a, made a statement in the first thousand meters. Um, uh, Giancarlo perhaps looking a little bit more relaxed, but of course, as I said, not a dressage event. Lots of different ways to get to the finish line, right? Absolutely. Lots of ways to get to the finish line and uh, different tactics but Steven you know strong athlete lots of fitness in there he'll have to make do his best in that final two, 250 meters and see if that but gut check that comes that's right Max and so of course you know we can see the red buoys in the background here and John Carlos just popped his stroke right up here we might see him momentarily looking over his shoulder to see exactly where Stephen Harris is but Stephen's still rowing a very strong very powerful rhythm as they're coming up into probably the last 20 strokes of the race here yeah, Stephen clearly looking to use his power in the last final two strokes and keep the length, whereas John Carlo has used that rate and uh, is pushing the rate up to increase his boat speed. I wonder what, uh, how it will come down into the last 100 meters. This is going to be the race for the medals here in this, the men's lightweight singles. This is a final, and we're about to crown a new national champion. It's all going to come down to the next 30 strokes. Who can push it? Who can maintain? And who can believe? They all want it, but who's going to get there first? Stephen Harris certainly looking like he's starting to flag, but he's still out ahead. Giancarlo pushing very, very hard, coming right up onto his stern here as we're coming into the last final strokes of the race. One last look over from Stephen Harris. Do I have it? Have I secured a national championship title? Yes, he has. Fantastic. John Carlo. Diamante in lane, uh, sorry, finishing his second. Race. Oh, and a great fight there for the bronze medal. Look at the athlete from Quebec, Charles, uh, Charles Etienne, uh, with the bronze medal. What an amazing finish there. Hats off to Giancarlo. Fantastic sprint, really pushing Steven all the way to the finish. But in the end, well, it almost looked like a little bit of uh, water still between the boats. Steven Harris is our new lightweight men's uh, national champion. And did you get uh, the time there, Taylor? Not bad, eh? It looked like it was around about seven minutes, so they would have at least been challenging for the fastest time of the heavyweight single. The, 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 light, the lightweights are, are so impressive just as athletes from, from having to manage their weight and, of course, having to manage racing everybody at uh, the same weight as them as well, too. So 